And now, please welcome Dr. Stuart Young. Good afternoon. My name is Stuart Young, and I'm a program manager in the Tactical Technology Office. My research interests include intelligent behaviors for unmanned systems, field robotics, and the application of autonomy and autonomous capabilities to conduct militarily relevant missions, such as ground and air systems that you heard Dr. Leahy talk about. This afternoon, I'm excited to tell you about one of my programs, ALIAS, where the objective was to develop and flight demonstrate a flexible and extensible automation architecture for existing manned aircraft. The goals that we sought to achieve are to increase safety, enhance mission effectiveness, and to demonstrate cost savings. On a cold February morning this year, a Black Hawk helicopter flew for the first time without pilots on board as part of the ALIAS program. We created a true inflection point in the minds of Army leaders. They realized this is no longer theoretical, but is actually possible. As aircraft technology and missing complexity have evolved, pilot workload has been more demanding than ever. DARPA conceived of ALIAS to address this challenge. ALIAS developed a transformational autonomy architecture infrastructure for existing manned aircraft. We set out to develop a common autonomy tool set that could be used across multiple types of aircraft, including, as shown here, rotary wing, fixed wing commercial aircraft, and military jets. During the course of the program, ALIAS has flown on nine different type of aircraft. The ALIAS software fosters a human-machine collaboration that enables new missions, allows us to reduce workload and improve safety. On the right-hand side, you can see the checklist that the pilot's going through. He has to just hit the green check mark, and then the rest of the system takes care of the rest of the checklist automatically. Autonomy adds new capabilities, such as allowing us to do firefighting at night, something that seems obvious, but we can't do it because it's not safe. But this is the best time to attack a fire, and we're all very comfortable with understanding how this could be useful in our society. Or operations in bad weather or degraded visual environments. I wouldn't want to have to land in this type of environment, but our warfighters do this all the time. And advanced manned and unmanned teaming that all of us in TTO and DARPA are focusing on these type of capabilities. With ALIAS, any aircraft can become an optionally piloted vehicle, allowing a helicopter to be flown in the morning, as shown here, with a full crew, and then with the flip of a switch, which is my favorite knob in the aircraft, the same aircraft can be used to fly an unmanned resupply mission in the afternoon. In order to facilitate the transition of the ALIAS technology to the Army, we've worked with them in what's called the Project Convergence program or effort that they have, which is a campaign of learning that the Army participates and develops to design, uh, that's designed to further integrate uh, systems into the Army and joint force. As part of Project Convergence 21 out in Yuma, Arizona last year, we flew a contested resupply mission. We delivered needed supplies to troops that were in contact and for this mission, the helicopter was launched, unloaded, and sent home by the soldiers in the field. Essentially, these soldiers here in, in a mission scenario from the 82nd Airborne commanded the mission. They picked up their, they requested their resupply, they picked up their resupply, and then they sent the mission to the robot to just head back to base. Over the course of the program, we've had many innovations from our performers. One of our performers successfully used a robotic arm coupled with a camera that could rapidly learn to replicate the actions of a human in the cockpit. It was engineered to be bolted into any cockpit and began to fly right away. Another performer developed a flexible software core and that converted both a fixed wing aircraft and a helicopter into autonomous vehicles and flew them side by side. Here we see an automated engine start without anyone in the cockpit. Thanks to our performers, innovations like this can be accomplished with just the push of the button. It may not seem like a big deal, but if you're doing maintenance on these vehicles and you have to start up the aircraft just to do a quick check, you can save a lot of money by not having the pilots have to come on board just to fire up the aircraft to do a maintenance check. One of our performers developed 
the problem or address the problem of obstacle planning. Here you can see the planned route in green, and then those pink obstacles are shown on the display, and the aircraft automatically replans its mission around the obstacles. We can also do automatic landing detection. We can find an area where we could land and ensure that we can get home safely uh, when there's an emergency. One of the, uh, sorry, the, uh, here you can see the pilot interacting with the system. Uh, he's basically acting in more of the role as a mission commander and working to understand the system as a whole. And notice he's not touching the sticks, nor is the safety pilot, showing that the confidence in the system is pretty uh, well understood. Here we show at Project Convergence 21 the ability of the modular open system design that we had in the system which made it easy to integrate new mission systems that extend an aircraft's lifespan and functionality, such as this tube-launched UAV. As we ingressed into the LZ, we were able to reseed the battlefield with an unmanned UAV launched out of the aircraft. Of course, the opportunity here is obvious. We also showed that we were able to integrate our system within the Army's software infrastructure so that on their display, not only the Black Hawk, but also this UAV showed up as two UAVs and they controlled them with their existing systems. Currently, DARPA is transitioning ALIAS to the Army. An ALIAS fly-by-wire retrofit was installed on this aircraft. It's an Army aircraft that is now in flight testing and performing flawlessly. The key thing here is once we get this fly-by-wire passing airworthiness, then the alias capabilities are just a small software install to the aircraft, and then the Army can be on its way with autonomy in their existing aircraft. Alias lets humans do what, the machine, what they do best and lets the machines do what they do best. Pilots shown here, Jammin, can be seen as a mission commander. Alias makes it possible for anyone to fly a helicopter with just 45 minutes or less of training. Here you can see the former deputy director of DARPA, Peter Heinem, flying the ALIAS aircraft with just a few minutes of training. This capability enables a future in which personal air vehicles can be easily thought of as easily to drive as cars in this uh, simulation. ALIAS program has been successful in providing insight into what's, not, what's now possible with autonomous aircraft, and this is just the beginning. We have demonstrated that autonomous flight is possible in an architecture that is on path to FAA certification. We're now working with industry and the services on how they can take advantage of these advances and un uncover what capabilities are now realizable. For example, we're working with large logistics companies that are looking into using the alias software to pilot in a cargo aircraft to go with, with one pilot as opposed to two. Obviously, huge cost savings. We're also working with the department services um, the Air Force, the Navy, and the Marines, and the Air Army to pursue capabilities that ALIAS enables, such as flying a Black Hawk with two pilots for a mission uh, with aids that help them operate in a degraded visual environment, and then with the turn of a switch, they can turn that aircraft into a UAV for high-risk missions, such as contested resupply or medevac in an area where you might not risk a pilot to go rescue soldiers. One of the lessons that we've learned from ALIAS is the value of demonstrations. If a picture is worth a thousand words, a, a, a demonstration is worth about a million. Our flight demonstrations have been truly opened the eyes of many transition partners that autonomous flight is no longer in the future, but it's now possible, thus achieving the mission of redefining possible. When you show someone something they think that was impossible or not possible for many years to come, you can watch the gears turn in their head and like, ooh, how can I use that? What are the capabilities that this can enable? When I flew, first flew one of the alias aircraft, the Sarah helicopter, I was having a conversation with the test pilot. Uh, with the alias system turned on, we were just having a conversation about the technology. And it was pretty easy. I was just using a joystick. We're having a merry old time. And then he turned the system off. After about 30 seconds, I was locked in. He says, Stuart, what are you thinking about? And I said, nothing. I was locked in on the horizon on one point, trying to control all the sticks, the cyclic, the collective, the foot pedals, to try to keep that aircraft hovered. My cognition was completely consumed on just hovering. I believe ALIAS is creating a true inflection point in aviation. I want to truly thank all the performers in ALIAS and uh, the opportunity I've had to lead such a great team as a program manager at DARPA. If you're interested in working with 
on game-changing problems like what we're doing here in Alias. I hope you'll consider working with us at DARPA and reimagine what's possible, helping us solve the toughest problems that our nation faces.